Legendary radio personality and philanthropist Tom Joyner is one of the most celebrated and recognized media icons in the country today. As host of the nationally syndicated program, The Tom Joyner Morning Show, Joyner empowers and entertains more than 7.4 million listeners each week. As a recognized leader within the industry, Joyner continues to use his vast influence to inspire and activate his listeners through social outreach. The, time, the Tom Joyner Foundation, which supports students attending historically black colleges and universities, has raised over $65 million. His destination events, such as the All-State Tom Joyner Family Reunion and the Tom Joyner Foundation Fantastic Voyage Cruise, sell out annually, demonstrating the power of radio. Joyner started his radio career in Montgomery, Alabama, working his way through Memphis, St. Louis, Dallas, and Chicago. He earned the moniker, the fly jock, in the mid-1980s when he would fly into Dallas in the morning for the morning drive program and then commute to Chicago for his afternoon program. He did that for years. In 2003, Joyner made the Tom Joyner Morning Show a part of his company, Reach Media Incorporated, a cross-platform cross entertainment company founded with partner David Cantor, which creates events, digital content, and initiatives that engage communities. Reach Media has grown to syndicate the most dominant urban programming in radio today, with highly interactive positioning in digital media and events as a subsidiary of Radio One. So join me in congratulating Tom Joyner. My name is Tom Joyner. I'm known as the hardest working man in radio. <laughs> because for eight years, I flew back and forth from Dallas to Chicago, doing daily shows in each city. Eight years, 10 million frequent flyer miles. But that was before 9-11. It was much easier then to do that. I couldn't do it now. I represent black radio. And I came into radio during the uh, civil rights era. You, don't, you didn't have a Tom Brokaw, a six o'clock news or a 10 o'clock news back then. So you didn't have social media, you didn't have cable networks. You had black radio. And black radio told, told black people where to go march. We would stop the music, and we would hand the microphones to Dr. King, Reverend Abernathy, Stokely Carmichael, the rest. And they would tell us where to go, what we're doing, and when to be there. But my, intr my introduction to radio came before that era. You see, I'm from, a, I'm from a town you may have heard of, deep and rich in black history called Tuskegee. Tuskegee, Alabama, where my parents met, they, uh, they met on the Tuskegee Airmen program. My father was an airman, my mother was a secretary, and they hooked up, <laughs> and here I am. But during that, during that era of civil rights movement, if you notice on the, on, the, uh, on the reels, on the news reels, you saw young people. We call them millennials now. Um, because our parents, our parents were too busy working for white people and didn't want to didn't mess up their jobs, so we marched. We marched every weekend for something voter registration, desegregation, whatever. And I'd like to tell you that I was there for the cause, but I was a fat kid then. 
What? You're still a fat kid? I heard that. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and they had the best food. <laughs> oh my God, the food was great. This one particular Saturday, we were protesting the fact that the radio station in my all-black town only played music for the 1% of the merchants that were in that town. It was an automated system, the old automated system with the big reels. And they played Enoch Light and, 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 and artists like that, background music for the, for, the, for the merchants. And so we're out there marching. We want some Aretha, some Temptations, some Wilson Pickett. And the guy who owned the radio station, who also owned a Ford dealership, came out and said, you know, I see y'all out here marching every weekend for something. I don't need this in front, of my, in front of my dealership. I'm trying to sell some cars. I'll tell you what, which one of you wants to do a program on this uh, Sun Up to Sundown station in the afternoons on Saturdays? And so the hand that didn't have a sandwich in it, <laughs> and that's how I got into the business, <laughs> protesting. <laughs> and that's when I learned the importance of black radio and how black radio should super serve its community. And that's what I'm still doing, super serving my community, but with a bigger platform, instead of one radio station in one small town, um, I'm on a hundred some odd radio stations, and we still hug, we still kiss, we still educate, inform, empower. I stand as a giant of broadcasting on the shoulders of giants that you probably don't know the names of, but trust me, if not for them, I would not be here today. So thank you very much for recognizing what I do. Thank you so much.